coffee background. You've loved coffee your whole life, right? That's usually what what it takes to make a coffee shop? One might assume. No, I uh, actually didn't love coffee my whole life. Um, I love the concept of what coffee does to people. It gathers people. So that is what I think began to what what made coffee really intriguing to me is, is the community around it. And so, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the, uh, the time I spent in Italy really brought that together how people gathered and how it brought people in like the local little community together every day and you saw the same people so I started drinking coffee because I really appreciated that, that component. Was there a day in Italy, the first time you drank coffee and you just thought, okay I'm going to give it a shot today, I'm not a coffee drinker but I'm in Italy, what, what happened? Was there like, can you paint me a picture of yeah, the so, shop and everything? So when Italians connect they just say, hey let's go to the bar and the bar is like the local, local coffee shop is what they call a bar and in the afternoon usually is kind of a, a watering hole and they just get a shot of espresso and they throw two sugars in it and, and that's it. So that was kind of my introduction into that. So it was such a short, a small amount, like that's not a big deal to, to consume. Um, and then you just kind of develop a, a taste for that. So good, bad or otherwise versus like world-class coffee connoisseurs might like or not like it, but it's just kind of what I was conditioned to. And so I love it from that perspective and it's really familiar. Um, but that little bit of, of coffee was an easy, easy entry for me, even though it was espresso, which was intense. And um, yeah, so it just became very much a part of the daily routine. And you came back to the States and thought, all right, I'm going to dive a little deeper into this coffee world. I spent the last kind of 10 years after that just kind of dabbling and appreciating. I got an espresso machine and started toying with it at home and playing with uh, different grinds. Like, I, I didn't know anything, like very little. All I knew is that it pulled people together in Italy and that was cool. And, I'm Italian now, is what I felt like, so I have to have an espresso machine in my house, and um, just kind of went from there. Did you start coffee from day one? Yeah, I kind of fell into getting more into coffee by accident. I needed, uh, I moved briefly to New York, and when I came back here, I needed a job. My friend had a, worked at Starbucks, and they had a job opening, so moving on from there, I went to an independent coffee shop uh, that, that was in Frisco, where I grew up, and uh, we used the roasting company from Austin called Cuvée, and so uh, their staff came and did some training with us, and uh, in the coffee industry, you'll hear people, hear people uh, frequently talk about their aha moment or, or like the moment they realize that um, coffee was a career choice for them or that, that it could be delicious. So um, I remember when we were doing our first training there and uh, we were dialing in the espressos and uh, their trainer, Lorenzo, pulled me a, a shot. But I tasted and just thought, wow, like I never imagined coffee could taste like this before. I've never had an experience with coffee like this before. And, that, I guess, was the introduction to just being more interested in it uh, as a product and then through more exposure to the industry just kind of fell down the rabbit hole. Yeah. After that kind of aha moment um, at, at that shop, um, the same guy, Lorenzo, he encouraged me to get more involved with uh, a couple organizations like the Barista Guild of America and especially Coffee Association. So through doing some kind of industry and trade uh, events there and being exposed to kind of just um, how small of a community the coffee industry was despite being global and how much everybody wanted to help each other and, and help one another succeed and just how passionate all these people were. Like, it, it was a pretty quick conclusion that it was an industry that I wanted to be a part of as a, as a career choice. That's great. What about the industry you were in before? What were you doing? Uh, mostly food, food service stuff. So I'm still really into food and spirits and cocktails and, and all of those other things too, but there was just something particularly about the community that made up the coffee industry that was a little more transparent and a little more focused on collective success. And it was a young industry in the Dallas area, so it was really fun to be kind of able to see it grow and to be a part of that developing culture. Um, I built homes for 10 years and had a landscape company and started a youth adventure company for a few years. That was a lot of fun, but terrible plan, it tanked, but it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Um, so I started different entrepreneurial things, but um, living in Richardson and wanting to create a, a watering hole of sorts is, and coffee really kind of fosters that opportunity and that's what all that kind of came together, it culminated in, in that, that reality. So. I feel like the reality for any entrepreneurship 
whether it's owning a coffee shop or construction or um, culinary experience, you find yourself changing your course, right? So it seems like you both kind of were on these paths and then it just turned into where you are now, um, which seems like the right place to be, which, hey, like, it, like you said, in nine months, who knows where you'll be? But I think that's, that's the exciting part of it and, it, and it looks like you guys are definitely on the right track. From where I'm standing, I think so. Um, but I think the other thing I wanted to hit on is this location in particular. Positively, there's been real estate people that have come along in the city. I think we won the revitalization award. And so this spot in particular, I think, was an overlooked spot for a lot of reasons. One, it's like not really on the primary road, but it really feels like it is in a lot of ways. There's a lot of traffic that comes through here. So uh, we saw this as kind of a, a really unique opportunity to, to bring life back into to an area I think that really needed it, especially with so much going on in Dallas that's similar to that, just kind of this revital, revitalization push. And um, we're glad to be a part of that. It's, it's a fun it's a fun challenge, like it really is, to, to bring life back into an old building and see what it could be from what is. And this place is pretty beat up when we got here. Because there's no doubt that Richardson is rich in culture, so much diversity, um, that like, kind of like you said, almost not a lot of people, unless you're here, see it. And that's great that it's getting recognized and, and coming to this um, already rich culture um, with what you're trying to do and build a whole new kind of vibe and atmosphere isn't drowning that out necessarily. If anything, it's, it's accentuating it. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm so glad we got to really tell the story of communion here. I definitely didn't know the full background, so it's neat to hear the origins of how they both Tims changed their course and created this cool space, so you need to check it out if you have the opportunity to come to Richardson. But wanted to keep you guys updated on everything else we're, we're doing. Make sure you like and subscribe, guys, so you can really stay up to date with all the coverage. And comment below on if you've been to this shop before or if there's some other shops that you'd like us to go to. Love to connect with you. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, at Coffee with Courtney, so you can keep up to date on everywhere we're going.